Now we just showed that the complex octonions generate the Clifford algebra Cl6. So here we've got the zero vector at the bottom, which is just uh, the unit. And on the next level up, we have E1 to E6. So you might be wondering at this point why we have um, only E1 to E6. I mean, the, the octonions have imaginary units that go up to E7. On the next level up, we have bivectors. And we keep on building up these multivectors till we get to the top. where we have a six vector. And it so happens that E1 times E2 times E3 times E4 times E5 times E6 gives E7. So this is where this extra imaginary unit came, uh, went to. So now, of course, E7 isn't special within the octonions. You could have put any of the imaginary units up here. So if I would have put any of the six imaginary units of the octonions in the generating space here, the seventh one will always end up at the top. So now all we have to do is repeat what we did in the case of the complex quaternions, where we had the Clifford algebra CL2. So we're going to rewrite this generating space in terms of a new basis. Now with this new basis, it turns out that the alphas and the alpha daggers behave again like fermionic raising and lowering operators. So it's going to be tedious for us every single time to write down the arrows over top of these operators. So we're just going to emit them from now on. And finally, it's also going to be uh, tedious for us to write down that these equations are true for all f in the complex octonions. So from here on in, we're also, we're also going to emit the f's. So in other words, our equations will just be in terms of the operators from here on in. So now we can write down a number operator in the usual way. And here we've got three alphas and three alpha daggers. So this sum is going to run from one to three. And now finally, it turns out that these ladder operators have a unitary symmetry that acts on them. That symmetry is given by U3. So this U3 will rotate the lowering operators into lowering operators and these raising operators into raising operators. So U3, it turns out, is equal to SU3 cross U1 over Z3.
And this, U, this SU3 is interesting because it happens to be a subgroup of the automorphism group G2 of the octonions. Not only is it a subgroup of G2, but it happens to be the subgroup of G2 which holds one of the imaginary units constant. And this U1 is also interesting because it happens to be generated by our number operator. <laughs> 